So this is going to be somewhere between a conversation and a discussion and also some, some tips. And I actually want to show up some examples. If you have questions, ask at any time. This is, it, this is to be a bit of a discussion. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about staffers. As some of you heard when my boss was here earlier, he said, staffer's job is not, it is to get you, it is to make you feel empowered and get you out of the office and, and not have committed necessarily to do anything or committed the congressman to do anything. And that's not a, 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 a you know, the not intent as any sort of, you know, uh, attack on them or anything. It's just there's a lot of, they have a lot of competing interests and, you know, if they can manage it in a way so you come out feeling good, but they don't have to do a lot of activity, they view that as a, you know, that, that makes their lives that much easier. So, you have to be aware of your time, their time, and how to maximize the ability to get something to them and get something out of them. So, all that stated, you have, when you go in, most of the very first thing you need to establish with them is how much time do you have. If you've got five minutes, that will tell you something. You know, and it, and it, may, it may only be because they got double booked today. It doesn't necessarily imply that they have less interest. They may be double booked for whatever reason. They may have... Aren't, aren't they going to just say that every time? I no. <laughs> no. I've, been, I've, I've gone to meetings where it's like, yeah, listen, I, I only have... I have you know, five minutes here. I've gone in and means, oh yeah, I don't have anything for about another hour, so let's hear all of it. <laughs> so you can get everything. That's why you have to establish right off the bat. Thanks for meeting you. How much time do we have with you, sir? And let me let me say, there's been an awful lot of March door meetings where they'll tell you at five or ten minutes, and once you they get in and figure out who you are and why, and you are significantly different than everything else here. It can, it can go a half hour. They will say, well, I'm going to push off whatever, all this other stuff. If that can happen. I had, I had a meeting where the guys, oh, I got 10 minutes. That's all I got for you. We stood there for an hour. <laughs> okay. It, I won't say it happens a lot, but it can happen. So, you know, let, when you get into the agenda, be aware of what they're saying and then, be, you know, be prepared to adjust. So, you get in there. You're shaking their hand. You know roughly how much time they're expecting, and and that and whatnot. What do you? What do you what's the next item? You want to know. You you have two important jobs. You want to communicate the agenda. But more importantly than communi communicating the agenda, you want to find out what they're thinking about the agenda. You can you can go in there. Actually, let me give this as my first example. I need one volunteer who has never done a March storm briefing of any type before. Amador, you're up. You're going to be congressional staffer. So you will just, you know, react to what I'm saying and tell, and, and afterwards we're going to discuss this. Hello, I'm, uh, sir. My name is Aaron Osley. How are you today? I'm uh, saying, how are you? Great, great, great. Good, Listen, good, good. I'm here to talk about space stuff with you. Um, oh, I'm sure. I love to hear about that. Great. So, <laughs> what we're talking about today is we got a lot of spaceports. They're having this issue in terms of with high performance aircraft. They are they can't operate out of the field. This is not on our agenda, by the way. This is just an example. And so they're having problems with ABS and AST not cooperating. And so no, we're ABS. here to help that out. AST, sure. So, now the question is, does he know jet, anything what I just talked about? Do you? I don't. <laughs> this is the point. You want to know, you want to, you, you have, all you're doing is telling them stuff, as you can see. I'm not getting any data from him. And I'm also not giving him good data in a presentable fashion. So, a different way to do it would be something like, and this is from our agenda, I'm here to talk to you about the space station. I'm sure you're aware how much the U.S. has invested in it. It's about $50 billion to $100 billion, depending on who you ask. That's important to me. And I don't want to lose what we have there. Is that, you know, how does the congressman feel 
about the space station. Now, he's not going to know because he doesn't have a congressman right now, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You can go ahead and sit down. I'm hungry. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, <good job>. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, gathering data. You, know, you notice how the first one, what am I doing? I'm, I'm throwing a lot of stuff at him. I'm not engaging with him. I, you know, I'm using acronyms. All kinds of things that you don't want to just be sending stuff his way. You want to create a conversation. That is the, that is very, very important for data gathering. If you can start a conversation where you sit, where you, you know, where you, you're talking about something and it's clear they understand what you're talking about, you want them responding to you. So you can do that by asking questions. Feel free to stop at any point and say, does this make sense? Do you understand? How does the congressman feel about this? So look, as a team, you're going to be in there as a team. So expanding on Aaron's point, you, that, uh, there are, even the best of us get in a bad mode of talking too much sometimes. If you notice your team member is doing all the talking and the staffer is not saying anything, you, you can interject and ask them a question. Hey, well, how do you feel about this? What do you think of the space station? Are you worried about the space station coming down in 2024 and we lose this whole industrial base? The most powerful thing you can do is ask a question. And so you really want to quickly get to them sharing with what they're thinking because you can build off that. If you're doing all the talking, you have no idea where their head is, um, and that, that those are nine times out of ten, that's a... Uh, the lead, one of the least effective needs. You want to pull that out of them and use questions. So, you start doing that, you're gathering data for us. Because that's going to tell us the congressman from here cares about this issue. The congressman from there, from this, doesn't care about that. This congressman is hostile. All that stuff is important, important data. So, you're engaging with the staffer, you're talking with him. Two points when you start talking with him. One, and this is actually, you'll want to do this before you actually meet with them. Observe the office. When you get into the office, look around. Do you, what do you see in the way of the office? Do you see anything related to space? Do you see things related to frontier, you know, front, the frontier? What do, you, what do you see that may be of importance to us? An example, there was a, I had a, a meeting on Capitol Hill and walked into the office and to demonstrate, and this one office, they had the entire federal uh, U.S. code printed out, piled from floor to ceiling in ten piles, because they wanted to show how insane they thought the U.S. code was. That's useful data, because that, that tells us something. Um, so gather that kind of data. Second point, be prepared to leave your assumptions at the door. Doesn't mean don't go in with a blank slate. Because you may, work, you'll walk in knowing this congressman is a member of a committee. This congressman is from a state, and some other things like that. But operate on, you know, don't don't use that use that as a guide, not a, not a religion. You can you can walk in. Oh, this congressman is from Alabama, therefore he's going to help us. Not necessarily, but he might. You know. You, you, you know, if you can identify, you can identify going in targets of opportunity, but understand they are only targets of opportunity. So don't, don't lock yourself into, into a particular item. Do we have any questions on any of the stuff I've covered so far? Okay. Um, as you're talking and gathering data, You'll, and as, if you look through the packet, you'll notice we have specific asks. There's two, two parts to a specific ask. One is the ask we collectively are making. So for example, um, bring up one of the slides, I don't, uh, one of the ones with the specific ask on, please. It's kind of cut off down there. But okay, yeah, here we are. We have request uh, uh, to sign a me member letter. This is the specific ask. All of them say request on them, and it's this is what we are asking your office to do. They're not going to be able to tell you. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big thing to have a congressman introduce, you know, formally be a sponsor of a bill. 
it's not a small thing first for a member to sign a letter. So the, the staffer is not going to commit to that in a heartbeat. But we are making a formal request of them. That's the first point. The second point I'm making is a specific request. You then want to take your, your, the specific ask from all of us and turn it into a specific ask from you to the staffer. Now the kind of thing for that is to say, so we're, we're supportive of this. Will you take this to your, your boss? And who do we have, and are you the person to follow up when you take this to your boss? You want to you want to you want to give them a formal requirement for action. If they if they if they tell you they're not interested and they're not going to do it, that's useful data too. But always be looking to create a specific ask both from always always reference the specific ask from us and tie it into a specific ask from you. Will you take this to your boss and let us know what he thinks on it or something like that? That is hugely important because it's, it's, it's forcing uh, action on them. Um, uh, what else to put them is how much time do you have? If you've got five minutes, that will tell you something. You know, and, and it, may, it may only be because they got double booked today. Doesn't necessarily imply that they have less interest. They may be double booked, whatever reason. They may have. Aren't they going to just say that every time? Uh, 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 you know, the thumb intent is any sort of, you know, uh, attack on them or anything. It's just there's a lot of they have a lot of competing interests, and you know, if they can manage it in a way so you come out feeling good, but they don't have to do a lot of activity, they view that as a, you know, that that makes their lives that much easier. So let's talk a little bit about staffers. As some of you heard when my boss was here earlier, he said, staffer's job is not, it is to get you, it is to make you feel empowered and get you out of the office and, and not have committed necessarily to do anything or committed the congressman to do anything. And that's not a, all right. So this is going to be somewhere between a conversation and a discussion and also some, some tips. And I actually want to show up some examples. If you have questions, ask at any time. This is, a, this is to be a bit of a discussion. So first, so you have to be aware of your time, their time, and how to maximize the ability to get something to them and get something out of them. So all that stated, you have, when you go in, most of the very first thing you need to establish